Okay, good. See you, man. Love you. Have a good day. First job was the, the Home Depot right in front of me, man. <laughs> you talk about uh, scary times now. This uh, big highway right here is actually where I did a majority of my training under a guy named Roland Pinkerton. Roland was, a, he's one of our, our superintendents and he's been around a long time. He's full of knowledge. He's, you'll, you'll get to meet him today. He's, He's amazing. We've got a lot of, a lot of old, old, older guys that have been around forever and ever and just full of knowledge. Back then I felt like I needed to do everything, you know, and just, I needed to shoot the grade. I needed to, I just, I felt if I, I did everything, then if something was messed up, it was my fault, you know, but, now I've learned to let these guys do it. They do it way better than I did, so I'm in better shape now. Hello. You going to get stop slow paddles? Yeah, fuck, I was on my way already. Fuck, I remember the box in my lips of the trailer that he had and he had to back around. Okay. Uh, yeah, wonder I'll if Roland has, to... wonder if Roland has some out there. Uh, I don't know, I'm pretty here in town, boss. I mean, I might like to go to the yard and get one. Okay. Alright. See you out here. I did a majority of my college at ASU. Did some through Texas Tech, but uh, graduated from ASU. Um, and then directly after that, I went to work for uh, Reese Albert, Jack Albert. Um, he, I, I, I was trying to get in to talk to him about employment, and I started in in uh, late January trying to get a hold of him. And uh, I think I finally got in in late April is when he finally was, I thought, able to talk to me. Come to find out, he's just trying to find out how uh, persistent I was. I, I wore out his secretary. I called her every day for, you know, three months. Anyway, I got in. And, he told me if I was gonna, if, if I graduated in May, that he would hire me. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, um. This end looks pretty dry. Should be okay, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Did you get my tag? I said twenty looks good. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah 20, 20, twenty looks good. I got a little. Perfect. I got a little worried when I went through uh, twenty-two. Yeah, that's why. That's when I texted you. But yeah, I texted you after that and said, "Dang, twenty looks great." Yeah. Like, 
it's crazy. I mean, it's it is super wet here. It's big old puddles, and but yeah. yeah, twenty down there. I think we're fine. I think we're good to go. Okay. Where? What's Albert um, doing? Albert's down here. He's gonna. We. They wanted to pump this one out because he's thinking he has to work on this one since his blade pro's not working right. He, and that one's pretty much cut down as well as he can get it. You know, and Jerry could finish it, get it at those four or five percent. Okay. Let me holler at so, Albert. I mean, Let me holler at Albert. I'll holler back at you. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Well, we can try this again. I don't know how long it'll last. Okay. Is your end dry? Yes. Okay. You working on base? Well, yeah, we're going to. Okay. Trying to get, trying to get Wally out of my way right now. All right. So we're going to be hauling some base in that little bitty short bridge deal down there with some bobtails here directly. Okay. I'm going to head that way shortly. One of yours is dry. One of yours is wet. Yeah. Dry. Yeah, one's wet. One's real wet. Yeah. That one's real wet. <laughs> I'm hauling dirt on, on the other one. And, uh, well, yeah, we're down there pumping the water out of the trash kitchen for Wally right now. And we get the water pumped out from uh, Billy process. Well, he's over there finishing process in that place for this little both ends of the bridge. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to haul it in with some hot tails. Okay. Well, I, uh, that sounds good. I'm just going to go up here and get with Albert. They're pumping water on this other one. And All right, well, we got... Uh, Jerry's on his way out there. They're going to run traffic control for Wally. Okay. Well, I'm headed up here to give Trey an air check so then air up the tires on this mechanic truck. And then Trey's going to change cutting edges and he's going to go start cutting base grade over there on one. Okay. He's got to change cutting edges first. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. Later. Get out and talk to Albert here directly. See ya. Okay. Morning, guys. You're gonna try to pump this, or what are you gonna do? Yeah, we're gonna pump this. And it's too wet. Yeah. We got the last in the uh, driveway up to the end. Uh huh. But uh, they're loading trucks there, so. Okay. Because I'm just gonna pump this, and I don't know if we can work here. It's too wet. To... I bet it's gonna be too wet. Too muddy. But we need to get the water off, so. Yeah, just uh, this one will pump a while. You're just gonna pump pump it over behind that windrow. Okay. And I was gonna try to work here, but let's see, we can't, I can't get it. Okay. And Ricky's over there loading trucks. Okay. Sounds good. Yes, sir. Uh, Jerry and his guys are gonna be at Barnhart. All day, so. Okay, so we'll just do this. Okay, let's try to dry it up. Fifteen years ago, everything was paper. 
and you had to really and truly even cell phones were barely coming out then it was kind of a a rarity you might have a big bag phone or something like that if you uh, had anything but everything was paper and you had to constantly deliver paperwork to the office and, and uh, turn in this and turn in that by a certain time and now technology is just like the the iPads we have now it's just when I, when I come across something, I enter it in my iPad, hit send, and it's it's at the office just like that. It just made everything so much nicer, and, uh, and you actually get more accurate stuff because of that, you know. Because with paperwork, you tend to procrastinate and put it off and more with technology, it's just more handy, and it it, it helps with that. Uh, Timesheets, you know, instead of you know payroll, I, I send in a timesheet daily, to where if there's any errors, they they can look at them right then, instead of me turning in a a week's worth at one time the day before they need to cut checks, and they're scrambling around trying to find all mistakes and get corrections and and all that so it's just streamlining the whole process from the field all the way into the office um, and, and and made everything a lot better it's today you got iPhones iPads you know all kinds of smart phone technology and all that stuff where if I've got an issue out on the job, I can snap a picture of it and, and instantly everybody that I'm talking to that is helping me handle a situation, they know exactly what I'm looking at, where that wasn't the case very long ago. Run into a conflict or anything, you know, any kind of uh, adverse situation with, 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 the technology we have today, I mean, I can instantly be in contact with with the people that, that need to know what's going on and and situations just be handled really, really quickly to where I, I just can't imagine, you know, years ago where I would have to either drive to the office to meet with a person or, or go find a pay phone and and call in or I mean I can just do it right here right right at the situation and and be in contact with four or five guys whatever it takes to you know get the problem handled and and it it takes a, a, an issue that that's handled in 10 or 15 minutes or less where I can imagine it it was a several day process back in the day you know and it, it's just I, I can call the the guy you know the project manager and I can say we got this issue and he can directly turn around and call the engineer and the engineer can make a decision and he can roll back to me within within five minutes you know and then then we, then we continue you know we know what to do it's kind of gone in a sequence where we went from paper and then uh, we went to laptops and it was, it was kind of a transition to where we were going to digital data or whatever and, and but you still needed to go to the office or go somewhere to send your time in and uh, you know, that it, when we did that we thought everything was great we we're like man this is so nice and all that but you still had to go somewhere to to do your stuff and uh, now with communication I mean I don't have to go anywhere I do it right here on the job you know, I hit send and, and the office has it and there we go you know
Going all right? What's the hours on this? Eleven oh eight. Twelve oh eight. Okay. Uh, just, just go slow. Take your time, man. You got four trucks, I think. Okay. Yeah, just, just go slow. Take your time. You'll be good. All right. Call me if you need something. I had kind of done different aspects of construction growing up and uh, at the same time kind of had a ranching background. So I knew I wanted a, a degree. So that's where the animal science came in because there was something that I knew something about, had some interest in. Uh, but I really kind of knew that I probably wouldn't have a career in in agriculture, so to say. But I wanted a degree, but road construction is not something that I knew really anything about. The only road construction that I'd ever been involved in was, <laughs> I worked on a ranch and, and I was 12 years old and they had a, a Kenworth bobtail and an old track loader and that was my job for two summers. I drove this Kenworth dunk truck and loaded myself with this track loader. I was a little bitty guy and the, the steering wheel was about twice as big as I was. And all I knew was I needed to load dirt in that truck and take it to that guy that, that, that drove the maintainer. And I just did that for three summers and and two summers anyway. And uh, that's all I knew, you know, is just get dirt to there. There's some complicated situations sometimes and I need to, to make sure that everybody understands what is happening and, and, and what we're gonna be doing that day to where No matter of your experience or skill level, you, you you got it and you know what's happening and it just makes everything run a lot smoother when everybody does know. And I don't have to run around and, and tell people what to do and, and and every move to make. You know, it's I'm just here as a support system for the guys that, that already know what's what's really happening. So these guys out here really, they really make my life a lot easier. Everybody got home safe, you know. We had a good production day, made good progress. I didn't fill out any accident reports, no personal injury reports, no anything. Everybody went home. That That's a good day right there. How we were doing a job in Ballinger one time, and we were uh, milling off an existing roadway, milling the hot mix off of it, and uh, come to this certain section. I guess had been patched and patched and, and overlaid, and anyway, there there ended up being 12 inches of of asphalt material over the concrete original road and that's what we we're trying to get to is the concrete and got in one of those sections and and the belt on the milling machine broke and of course we're out in the middle of nowhere it's not like you can just run to walmart and get you a new belt it's i think that belt had to come out of dallas and we had a 12 inch drop off right there in the middle of the driving lane. It's not like we could just leave. So anyway, I think it was four in the morning before I finally got home that night. Uh, after waiting on that belt to get here from Dallas, we got to you know, get it put on and then trying to figure out 
what, how we can mill this to where we can just get off the road, you know. And, and that's a, when you're running a pilot car operation, that's just a very unsafe situation. Luckily, it was a, a low volume road. So we had that to our advantage, but that's a scary night when you've got flaggers out there and, and, and it's pitch black and you're using all the lighting that you can, but you're limited on your resources and what you have. You're scared to death that somebody's gonna get hurt that night. Luckily nobody did and we, we got home and continued the next day, but that's one that'll always stick out. All you can do is just make sure that everything you have is legal. You know, if you've got all your signs you need to make you legal and all that, I mean, really and truly you can't control the public. They're gonna do what they wanna do. Uh, only thing you can do is protect yourself. You know, and I, I constantly have powwows with the guys telling them, you know, reminding them, make sure you don't stand there with your back to traffic you know always try to have somebody don't have just one set of eyes always have two sets of eyes uh, if you don't need to be on the roadway don't be on the roadway you know get against the fence out there as far away from traffic as you can unless you absolutely have to be there and that's something i kind of fight a lot you know especially with the newer guys because they want to be out there they want to be involved but there's times it's just, I, I don't need everybody out there, you know. It wasn't on one of my jobs, but it was on a Reese Albert job. And the superintendent, great friend of mine, you know, he, we had a striping subcontractor out there. Everything was legal. We had the attenuator trucks. We had follow vehicles. We had everything. We had cones. and and barrels set up, everything was, air boards going. And we had a guy that was, yeah, apparently under the influence, came in the job site and struck one of the, the guys, the striping contractor guys on the ground. That was a, that was a pretty sad day. You, you want everybody to go home. I think they're they're proud of what we do because they they know some of the projects I do, you know, and they they know that I was a part of this job or that job or or, or whatever. Uh, sometimes the long hours I can see kind of drain on them, you know. When the I got two boys, six and nine, and, you know, they want me at home all the time, you know, but. When I get home, I just try to make the best of the time that we can. But uh, I don't really, I do my best to leave work at work when I leave here, you know, and what we're gonna be doing is my guys are coming and we're gonna set up some traffic control and this concrete barrier rail that's up there on the bridge we're going to be moving it to the other side of the road so they can work on that side of the culvert hang on just a minute we had a problem what they're all brightly enclosed and no flagman no nothing no it was all in there last night Huh? It was all in there yesterday. I have no idea. You got a road work ahead. Those are all right lane closed. Those are all road work ahead. Road work ahead. One work, one work road ahead. One. Okay, road work ahead, right lane closed, or one lane. Flagger symbol. And you just no, need a. There's a rumple strip in there. We got a bunch yeah. of rumple strips. Bunch of rumple strips and right lane closed. That's it. It's not in our doghouse, is it? Mm. No, it's not. Call. It's not. We don't have time for it anyway.
Okay. I'll let you know. I'm not gonna get started till 9.30. My one truck's got a flat. They pulled my signs out of my sign trailer last night that I loaded up for today. Uh-oh. Yeah, they... Who's, I'm not, I don't know. Who's they? I don't know. But I went and made sure all the signs were in the trailer yesterday with all the cones and everything. We're just gonna bring it out. Right. Now the signs are gone. Okay, so what, what do we need? I need, I need, yes, Dale. Uh, shortly. Well, go ahead. What's rolling guy? I'm having a day where I can't get a hold of anybody. I need a flagman ahead and I need a... We've got two road works right now in that truck. Okay, that's good. Do you have any pilot car signs? Okay, uh, the trailer that I loaded up with all the pilot car signs last night are missing signs now. We don't have any damn signs. I don't know. Don't know. All right. You may move your rail, but it's gonna be a while because we gotta get signs out here. Um, Taylor, Taylor needs to go check RC container. Okay. And stuff in Merchant and see if, how many, what signs are in there. Uh, or I can see Martin. Fred. Where's Fred at? If I can get a hold of Fred. Do we know who the company is? No. Don't have a clue. Hey Fred, did you get any signs out of the sign trailer? You had did you have pilot car signs or what did you have? No, I mean, like the flagman ahead and all that stuff, you you put it on the trailer? Okay. All right, thanks. What are we, what are we missing out of the trailer? I need flagman ahead and be prepared to stop. Four. Total of signs? Yeah. We got the lane, we got road work, we got left lane or right lane closed. Mm -hmm. So we just need flagmen ahead. They didn't get the rumble strips, did they? Yeah, I've got the rumble strips and the rumble strip signs. Okay. They just kind of got some stuff here and there. Did Pato get that? Pato's the only one in the town. Can't imagine him getting them. See, because Craig's in, in there looking now for signs for Ernest and Mike. I guess David's going to get signs. Jerry's, Jerry's coming. David's bringing signs. Je but is Jerry, who's, who's running traffic? Jerry. Jerry is? Jerry's going to stay here. Okay. Well, I just, so I can get a hold of yeah. him. Yeah. Okay.
You know, you have the rolled up signs that go along the roadway and for traffic control. Um, I checked yesterday to make sure they were all on the trailer, everything was good. They're not there now. So, Jerry will be here waiting on it. And, uh, okay, where are you at exactly? Well, I just left, Bar well, they're in Barnhart, right there in Barnhart. They're in Barnhart? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All righty. I'm headed back. We're going to try to catch the all mix. And uh, anyway, get to Turner okay. by noon. Yeah. Uh, I have to stop to get some bases and I'll head out. Jerry has bases. Jerry has bases. Jerry, here. yeah, Jerry has enough bases. I don't know where the signs went to. Yeah, okay. All right, then I'll just load up uh, what I need then. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, All right. man. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Okay, David is leaving Angelo. He's bringing you all your signs that you need. Uh, okay. Go ahead and lay out your bases to where they're ready. Go ahead and lay out your... Yeah, and the rumple strips, go ahead and get them out there. Well, no, don't. Drag the rumple strips off the edge, but that way when the signs get here, you can uh, get going real fast. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. All right, and y'all just uh, stay there as long as they need and and call me when you're done. All right, then. I sure will. All right, man. Thanks. You know, you have some of those days it's just quiet, you know, and you, you take advantage of those. And then you got days that I would guess over a hundred. I'd say a hundred phone calls a day is an average, you know. Just because there's so many moving parts to our outfit that everybody call call Wally Jones. Okay, just talk to David. They've got the sign. He's got them in his truck. He's headed that way. And uh, talk to Jerry. Jerry's gonna go ahead and lay out all the bases and get the rumple strips on the side of the road where they go. So once the signs get there, it'll we'll get going real quick. Okay, all right, appreciate it. Thanks, Wally. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Leroy. Yes, sir. You got, when are you going to load? What's that, boss? When are you going to start loading? I'm already loading, boss. Okay. I'm going to finish up the last the real truck, and then I'm going to continue the beat mix load to have one more. Okay, so you're running for a while? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. All right. All right, man. Thanks. All right. All right. All right. That helps. I thought we had a hundred ton window today to catch all mix. So he's running mix to the Walmart job. So the simple answer is I've got to have a job to support my, my family. But I'm kind of blessed in a way that I found a job that I can make a career out of. And I really enjoy doing what I do. And I work for an outfit that takes care of their employees the way they do. To 
to where I don't mind going to work. You know, I mean, I, I'm not saying I look forward to going to work every day, but I never dread it. Some of this, you know, different phases of the job are just kind of slow moving, slow paced, and, and I have a harder time with those than I do the, the stuff that, you know, I like looking back at the end of the day and seeing what we did, you know, the instant gratification, you know. Kind of like mowing your grass, that's instant gratification. You can see exactly what you just did, you know. And it's harder to see it. You have to kind of step back and, and take a big picture look on some of the processes we do because you, you feel like you didn't do anything that day, but you made a huge step in, in the ultimate completion of the project. It's, it's hard to see sometimes, but. And, and those, are, those are my hardest days where it's just, it's stuff that needs to be done, but you really can't tell that we did a whole lot that day. Those, those are tough. They know when they had a great day, you know, and, and they all feel good. And, and, and you can just, just see it, you know, on their faces. And they, they strive to do that every day, but sometimes me as a, as a job manager, I have to pull the reins back and say, okay guys, we're, we're gonna do this today. And it's just, it's, it's part of the puzzle that, for one, it's usually not very fun to do. And, and two, it's, you, you can't see really what you did that day. You know what you did, but visual is, is, is a big part of it also. You know, paving and concrete and all that, that's, that's kind of fun because that's transforming the, that, that transforms the project at a pretty rapid pace. Where a lot of what we do is is building the cake, you know, and, and or that's kind of what I refer to it as, is building the cake. And then when you go to putting the icing on and all that, that's, those are fun. Well, this guy's doing here is we're setting some nails in our subgrade for alignment. So we kind of know where the edge of the, the subgrade is using the GPS survey and Let's see, we have 15 and then we're doing 11 foot off the cut line. Yeah, plus so 29 feet off center line. Yes. I'm going to get him the big nails. That, that'll run. Let's just go with that for now. Go with that? Yeah, okay. for now. Just so we get started. Got a hammer? Where's the hammer? Hold on there. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, face.
Well, he showed up, like I said, I hired on as a CDL operator or driver day one. I mean, day one, I looked at him, I said, I'm glad you got a CDL, man, but I need your brain, you know? And so what do you think about surveying? And he said, cool. But I was telling the guys, his brain always has to be working. And if, if I don't have anything going for him, he pulls out a violin and goes to playing a violin right here on the side of the road. You know, but he, but he has to be doing something at all times. It's so funny to see a guy that's like six or eight playing a little violin on the... I had a guy, it was, it was his first day, and he, he asked me, he said, what does it take to make a great employee? And I'd never been asked that in 16 years, you know. But it just, it, I mean, it just came right off. I said, well, first off, you need to show up every day. And I said, I'm probably not going to have that issue with you. but." Always be paying attention to what we're doing and then paying attention to what happens next. That way, next time we do that operation, you don't have to be told next. I said, then you're a good employee. So, Y'all probably see it in y'all's deal. You know, if you have somebody that you constantly have to say, go get this and go get that. If you've got somebody that you don't have to tell what to do and, they, and that just makes a fluid motion for the whole the whole team, you know. You know, I mean, I would be nothing without those nine guys that are directly under me, you know, and and they make me look good. Therefore, I take care of them, you know. And if you have the rapport and the if you have guys that back you. I mean, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna succeed. That's true. But if you, if, if, if you don't support them in everything they do and you don't, um, I've seen before where, where supervisors talk down to people and, and feel like they gotta constantly eat them out stay on their butt the whole time. You gotta let these guys kinda take their own path, give them, give them some rain, and you know, and, and I'm here just to make sure that they don't get into trouble or do something that's gonna bite them later on, you know. Kinda goes back to like what we were talking about with they've got a voice and they've got, I mean, they're running this job just as much as I am. I was under rolling for a good period of time, you know, and and I learned so much. And when I got out on my own, I had also befriended a lot of other older superintendents that have been around Reese Albert forever, you know, and and so when I was faced with an issue, I'd pick up the phone and I'd call every one of them, you know. Every one of them, and, and every one of them would give me a different solution to whatever I'm faced with, and I just got to pull from that what would, what's going to work best for me. And so I've I built a job, and it's kind of uh, uh, a compilation of all the Reese Albert superintendents thrown into one, and and it's it's it's, it's a pretty good mix, and 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 I'm able to face adversities where it's you know I might use this guy's method of how he would handle that and I'm gonna use this guy's for that and it's not just you know I learned under rolling and it's it's not I'm, I don't do just what he does he, you know it's it's all the way across the board of all those guys that have, have helped me along the way and I'm, I'm greatly appreciated that appreciative that they've let me feed off of them, you know. But I kind of go into this everything I do in life. I'm kind of like a sponge, you know. I just want to know everything about it, and and 
you know, running this job is, is a big job for Reese Albert, and I, it, it's great, but when you've got a team of guys like I've got, and they're, they're taking care of everything that needs to be taken care of, Reese Albert's real good about letting me go stick my nose into things that are completely beyond my job description, but I want to know everything, you know? I want to know all aspects of this business. And even if it's just sitting in a meeting, listening, you know, you gain a lot just by by listening. Reese Albert, they'll they'll let you grow as fast as you want to grow, and and anybody that takes initiative to do above and beyond what they're hired to do, I think they embrace that, and and they're fully supportive of it. Um, there, there's people that just want to go to work and do what they're hired to do and you know they're they're not going to advance you know they see I surveyed this with a GPS in 01 so that was 15 years ago and we had already pulled a million yards out of the ground so 15 years later, I mean, I still, I drive in here and I'm like, oh my God. Of course we crush lots of our limestone base is for this area, a lot of it, the majority of it comes out of here. Uh, you got hot mix aggregates being crushed out here. Hot mix is being made out here. We have an older uh, an old hot mix plant out here that services a lot of our small commercial and outside sales, you know, does a little bit. Of, it won't make a whole lot of mix in an hour, but it'll do enough to cover if we're paving a parking lot or something like that, you know. What we're about to watch is a, is a, a blast or a shot of this face it's a 33 foot face and we're, we're gonna watch, basically we're gonna turn solid rock into small rocks to where it can go into the crusher and, and we can uh, crush it into whatever materials we need. So we're all excited, we're about to, about to see the shot and, and I hope all goes well. What, what they've done is, is a hole like this right here where they've gone in every 10 foot in a grid and they filled it with, a, with a, a, what's called prell. It's, it's basically a uh, fertilizer mixed with dynamite, kind of like what Timothy McVeigh used in Oklahoma City, 33 feet. We're gonna get to see it, and uh, it's pretty impressive. I've seen it before, but we have a lot of people here that are, this will be their first time, so I can't wait to see their reactions. How, do anybody know a time? Well, I know that. <laughs> no, okay, okay. All right, we're just running through some safety stuff right now to make sure all the man counts here and everybody's here. And uh, now we just sit and wait. Uh, Perfect. 